Okay, now here comes another question, which is along the same lines of the one I just did on the episode I just did. I'm sorry, the video I just did. Uh, and this has to do, again, with the same type of question. How can we have these stories, these very embarrassing stories about Muhammad and what he, you know, his, his violence, and especially what, about his wives? And if this were the case, can we not say that these have to be true because of the whole problem of embarrassment? And so this is from Peter Hunt. Uh, this is what he says. I still lean towards believing Muhammad did exist, and part of the Quran is actually from him, because Surah 33 is all about Muhammad's wives being angry at him and Muhammad bullying them in return, acting like a typical narcissist. It's really embarrassing. I can't see how any self-respecting redactor, I mean writer who's redacting his back uh, to this man Muhammad, from the 9th century back to the 7th century, would think that Surah 33 makes Muhammad look good. And I, my response to that is, absolutely, that's exactly what you would say if you are living in the 21st century and you are looking from our cultural grid. Because you are, Peter, uh, whether you like it or not, you come, and I'm not sure what country you are, I assume you are a Westerner for the name like Peter Hunt. I assume you either live in Europe or possibly in the United States or uh, with uh, you have an English-sounding name. So I'm assuming you're living in the English-speaking world and you're writing good English. So I'm assuming you're living in one of the English-speaking countries, which by definition has a memory. We are not, we don't call ourselves Christian nations, but we do have a Christian memory. And so therefore, when we look at the relations between men and women uh, uh, and husbands and wives, we are shocked by what we read in Surah 33. But that's because we're looking from our own grid. We're looking from our own perspective. We're looking from our own biblical eyes. This is not written by biblical from a biblical perspective. It's written by those in the 9th and 10th century redacting it back, or in this case, Surah 33, probably the 8th century, uh, early 8th century, maybe even the late 7th century. But that's from the Arab environment much, much further north, and take a look and see. When you ask that kind of question, you need to say, why don't you read it through their eyes? Now, I, I, this, I was really helped with this. I'm going to go back to Senegal again, because like I did in the last episode, when I was living in Senegal, this was something that I had a problem with, because the way they treated their women there, the way they, the way they treated uh, their children, and and I found was appalling, because it's not the way I would treat it. And, and then I had to keep on reminding myself, and I had to be reminded by my wife, Jay, you're assuming that the culture you're in is the culture you've grown up with. Be careful, because in many cultures, especially non-biblical cultures, and especially in environments that have grown up with the Quran today, or the environment in which the Quran was written, in those kind of contexts, you measure yourself as a man by how you control your women. You measure, and it's honorable to have complete control of the weird women, to keep them sequestered from other eyes. And the greater you are, the, the more wives you have, the greater you are. More than that, the more that you can keep them from other eyes, and the more that you can keep them from other men. And that's why in Surah 33, you have all these restrictions on his wives, even so to the point that even after he dies, others are not to marry them. That would be aggrandizing, that would be hugely aggrandizing to the person who was writing it, showing the and elevating the status of Muhammad. So in a 7th, 8th, and ninth century environment, an Arab environment, or in this case, a northern Arab environment, that makes all the sense in the world. Not today. Not for you. Therefore, be careful, Peter, that you don't measure the Quran using biblical eyes. The Quran is a very much a product of that environment, a product of that age, a product of the relationship between men and women, not what we see in Christ, not what we see in the biblical context, where you have reference after reference, where we are e the equality between men and women, that we are not to beat our wives, that we are not to, uh, to uh, be demean them, that we are not to sexually rape them, a marital rape like it has in Surah 2. Ayah 223, that we cannot beat them, like it like says in the Quran in Surah 4, Ayah 34. Can you see these kind of, this, depending on the culture you grew up, depending on the environment you grew up with, you're going to be able, you're going to see them as barbaric, obviously, because it's not, it's not the environment that we see in the Bible. But good point that you brought out there. Why would they keep them in there? Because that, for them, made, embellished Muhammad, gave him more stature in the eyes of other men. And that's why you say the same thing. If you have any problem with that, take a look what you see in Surah 55 and Surah 56. Look at heaven. The heaven that you see in the Quran is not the heaven you see in the Bible. The heaven you see in the Quran is very much an Arab heaven. Basically, it's a place for men with lots of other women to wait upon them. And that's exactly what I would expect from that type of environment.
And that's why one of the reasons why it's important that we understand the context. Redaction will always reflect those who are doing the redacting. And that's why all the more reason you're just making, making our point. It is not a book that we would be, uh, uh, the Quran itself is not a book that we would like to read or that we would give to others or that we would even like to follow. And I'm so glad I don't have to follow that Muhammad. I'm so glad I can follow Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad, as I've said for years and years and years, I can't find anything wrong with Jesus. I can't find anything wrong with how he acted, what he said, how he treated women, how he treated children, how he treated his enemies. Come on home to Jesus Christ. What a paradigm, what a model, not Muhammad. Here's a case in point. Thanks, Peter, for your question. God bless you. This is Jay.